I'm delighted to say Michael Meehan is with us. How are you getting on, Michael? I'm great, thank you. Go away race week. It's, um, is it, does it have happy memories for you? or? It uh, mixed memories, I suppose. It was, always, it was always a great occasion to, to get involved with it. Like, it's a super week. It yeah. just goes f above and beyond the racetrack, <laughs> as maybe you found out last night. But um, I suppose on a, on a footballing side of it, the mentality was if you were, if you were going to the races, you were, out, were, bad, you were yeah. out early. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you, were, you hadn't made a quarter final. And then there's a, a kind of a, a sort of a go with and, and skulk around the edges and try and hide <laughs> a little bit because there was a few years there where there was... Um, a couple of dodgy, you know, backdoor games that didn't go our way. So yeah, it was mixed emotions, but it's just turned into um, where you meet up with a gang from college. You know, maybe once a year might be the only chance you get to meet up outside of a wedding. Yeah. And um, it's 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 fantastic. You know, it's it's just it kind of takes over. It's 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 as soon as it's over, it's nearly building up to the following year. So yeah. it's, it's, it's it's good. Well, uh, we were talking about twenty thousand people there last night. Yeah. It was absolutely rammed. Mm, told that it would be like the quiet. I know day. that it is the quiet one. Yeah, it is. Uh, how think. have you ever done like the full house or the royal flush or whatever they call it? Going the, the full <laughs> no, full no, no. That would, I wouldn't be able to. Um, a couple of couple of days is probably as much. And initially, you know, they would have hit a couple of big days. Ladies' day, the Galway play, the Galway hurdle, in the middle of the week. Um, but it's kind of evening meetings now. Uh, Friday is is kind of is, is a good one. It's kind of a local when when people who Galway people or maybe people who went to college in Galway or working uh, outside of Galway come come down for the weekend and, and clock in. So I think Friday was the biggest night there last year, uh, numbers wise. And you know once you get the weather, it's just the town is is well catered as well. You know they pedestrianise, they extend yeah. the pedestrianised area as well, and it's just it's a real festival. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, you mentioned the weather there. Andy Friend earlier on was talking about uh, <laughs> yeah. turning the Galway weather to your advantage. Is that um, is that something the footballers did? Because there's there's definitely talk about the wind in Salt Hill being a very peculiar wind that it takes a while to. <laughs> it to is, to. yeah. And I saw I forget who put up stats at some stage. It was before the Connacht final um, on Twitter, and they had the conversion ratios. And, and Galway's were, were, were way down, you know, in comparison to all the major uh, stadia, stadia around the country. Um, so it's unique. It certainly is unique. I, I never minded playing there as a player. I, I obviously, you, you knew what you were going to get, but it was a, it was a good, fast, quick surface, and I kind of liked that. And the fact that you're, you're in there, you know, more often than everyone else, it, you, it's you should. It's advantage. Yeah, yeah, it is going to be an advantage. I think it has, under Kevin Walsh's reign, it has, you know, become quite a fortress and it had slipped for a little while you know before that but um, teams don't generally like coming here yeah well, like you were reading out a stat before we went on air about Jim Gavin and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, their I'm just trying to look home it record and stuff it, like uh, I guess home advantage is something that you can certainly make count on a regular basis when it comes to the league it's something that's being perhaps brought in if we see yeah. a super race as a stepping stone to something bigger perhaps in future decades and the home advantage will count for a lot more but unfortunately there's not too many counties managed to do too much I'm not sure do you have the stat there but so Dublin have played 103 games under Jim Gavin 75 of them have been in Croke Park That's amazing <laughs> wait that includes the league right yeah in the championship uh where is this now I have another one here. I've done 103 games and there's 35 of them playing Cook Park. They've played 35, 36 out of 59 league games at, at headquarters and 44 times they've played championship matches. 39 of those 44 have been in Cook Park. Mm. It's a bit of an advantage. Oh, it's, it, has, it has to be. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It's, it's these home are good away stats. from home. Yeah. Um, well, it's a home at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And I was just thinking on, on the way in this morning about... Um, I, th I felt we might... The conversation may be going here, but uh, just a little bit. I suppose all you would want as as a player, and it's in fairness, everyone wants to get out in Crow Park, but you just want fairness. You know, I think you just want equality. Yeah, yeah. Whether you're a Galway player, a Donegal player, a Dublin player, a Mayo player, whatever it is. And, turn, and now at the quarterfinal stage, when you're getting to the serious end of the championship, and I, I just think you know the the, the two games in, in Crow Park is, is is a bit mental. Yeah, and and they had the chance to fix it. Yeah, and they left it like the powers that be left it to the Donegal County Board to come up with a motion. As soon as that motion yeah. was published, we all knew it was going to fail. Nobody stepped in and said, that motion's bound to fail because the language is wrong around it. Why don't we try this thing? And uh, it became this kind of weird, stupid, pointless debate as opposed to, it's wrong that there's two home games for one team and not two home games for every other team. Irrespective of whether yeah. that team is the best team, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, if the team was the worst team, you might make, there would be some like... But if it was anyone, if it was Cork or Kerry getting that advantage, you know, everyone would be kicking up a stink, yeah. uh, a stink the same way. So it's, it's just about that, about the kind of fairness. 
And I look, I do think it has a little asterisk besides the All Irelands in the future. It's like, you know, the way when you look back at the old record books and you're like, the there was games in the 70s, the scoring was wild, and there's a little asterisk because oh, these were 80 minute finals. It'll be well, Dublin won these two All Irelands, but they actually had two home games in the quarterfinals, and everybody else didn't. I think, though, <laughs> I th I'm not so sure because they're just <laughs> they're a brilliant team. That's ah, the thing. They're yeah. super. They're and super. The, the players shouldn't have to answer to this. Like, yeah. It's not their fault. And I'm sure they don't want it hanging over them either. No. You know, but it's, it's just, it's, it's, allowed, it's allowed to go on. But um, they're just, they're just, they're, I think they're, they're kind of hitting new heights from what I've seen so far this year. Okay, especially this summer. Now, I know you can kind of argue they haven't maybe uh, played the top teams yet. And we will know a lot more come this weekend. But it's just some of their individual performances. Like, it's, it's frightening. Like, they've... They have everyone. Like if you were to pick three nominations for Player of the Year, they nearly have to have them all at yeah. the minute. Yeah. Um, now that won't happen, you know. But it's, it's just Clifford will get one more than likely if he keeps going. Michael right? Murphy. Michael Ma Murphy. Yeah, yeah, in fair, like, in, like there are lots. You know, like Ryan McHugh is having a super season as well. Um, but just like I think, you know, Jack McCaffrey. I think Con I think I think Conor Callahan is about to score three three. You know, he's just mm. that close to yeah. really exploding. Um, Oma might be the place to do it, but I just think he, he's he's sensational and he's yeah. so dangerous and everything. Immediately when he gets the ball, you know he he wants to go for a goal. He wants that's what it is for. Yeah. Out, yeah, and it's it's great to see. It just it's it it it'll, it'll brings everything to life. It's um, funny, Jack McCaffrey has the same thing, and he gets the ball in the half back line. Like, ooh, there's a goal yeah, on here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As Kildare supporters, we're used to that. It's like, oh, Jesus, this is the best score goal here. Yeah. What is it exactly about that? So about what Conor Callaghan is doing, except for you know putting on about uh, a million tonnes of muscle this year and yeah. getting bigger, winning his own ball. He's much better at that now. And I guess Paul Mannion, I think, has actually got even better again this yeah. year despite having the season of his life last year. What is it about that partnership? I think it's just, I suppose, more than any other county, you know, there's a huge expectation on, on Andy Moran for Mayo when he comes in, uh, or maybe on Damian Comer if we had him this year or when we've had him. There's a huge expectation on one or two forwards in, in teams, you know, to really deliver. Um, but but Dublin, it's it's much more than like we haven't mentioned Kieran Kilkenny mm. and and all the work he's done in the past and what he's doing. But so they're allowed, they're al they're being man marked obviously, and maybe sweepers will come and play. But it, they can't just look after the two guys. There's so much more going on. They have to spread themselves out. A backline or a defensive unit has to spread themselves around a little bit more. Um, and I think you're right, the physicality, Con, he's just he's gone up another level. Like we, we saw him stitch that goal early, um, was it in an Ireland final or semi final two or three years ago, where he just turned and went for both, the 45 in in. Both three yeah. thrown and then That's nailed. right. Um, but he's just now, now he, there's a, you know, there's kind of a, you can see that Dublin are looking to go direct that little bit more, 50, 60, we will put one in here. He has a physicality to win it, so has Kieran Kilkenny. Um, so they're just mixing it up now a little bit, that little bit more. We haven't seen too much of those long, you know, direct, you know, 50, 50 ish balls in. Yeah. Um, like he plucked amazing ones the last day. And I just think he's a bit like, uh, like Howard Stepp as well. Like he's like a centre in rugby. He can just go on the straight line, burst of speed over the first five yards. They can get inside. I don't know how they do. Like mm. it looks like there's nowhere to go. The, the gap is that tight, but they can get through. And once you get through the first line of defence, everything opens up. And then, like, like Mannion is just his speed and skill and twist and turn. And he, he's if he's sniffing around there, he's just going to give him a, give him a second of space, and, and he can pull the trigger. So, um, like, there's just so much going on there. Yeah. But they're just two super super players first and foremost uh, that can win their own ball that can take on their own men and that can score have it all there was a league campaign a couple of years ago where coming into the league I think it might be three years ago definitely it probably is three years ago where the team was being criticised for winning games but not scoring goals and in that league campaign they were having goal chance after goal chance but not converting them like they were getting one on ones and the keepers were making great yeah. saves game after game after game it happened um, but it's almost as if that work that they've been putting in over the last couple of years is now finally paying dividends, that everybody understands goal from far out and the five or six players move, yeah. it seems, in perfect unison to create space and, and open up channels for them. Um, so the game, their game has gone on to another level. Yeah, I think they probably have, they have the personnel. I suppose they always had the personnel when you had, when you had Bernard Brogan inside as well, you know, one of the top fours. Um, they just... They have the personnel to do that. Like they, they didn't convert everything. Like you know, Conor Callan, who we were talking about earlier, he would be unhappy that he didn't make the goalie work a couple of times in the last game. You know, I think they flew over the bar. So, but inevitably, when you have that much pace and quality running at teams in in Crow Park, the biggest pitch, the most spacious pitch, 
the one that they're used to. Yeah. They're going to find the pockets and, and they're going to create to create chances. And they have been rattling them in, in fairness, in the last couple of um Like that Cork games. game, uh, you know, Cork did mm. well. Yeah. And conceded five goals. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, I was there and it was like 61 or two minutes and it was, yeah, this is, this is going fairly all right. Yeah. Um, and credit to Cork for doing that. But I suppose you just got to remember it, it, it goes beyond that with Dublin. You're talking an 80-minute game. And they just they pull away. It seems like they almost have set plays at certain points as well when they're approaching their attacking setup. Like here in Donahue, he was going through this uh, on a shot clock a couple of weeks ago, where they almost set the play up on the left hand side of the pitch or on the right hand side of the pitch. The movement is almost basketball esque, mm. and they manage to create that space in behind the full back line. And also, you see that thing that they've done for so long now, which is almost crossing the ball and they get into positions to create that high percentage goal chance. Like they have point opportunities there yeah. and they're switching the play entirely to create uh, kind of full-blown goal opportunities it's it's incredible to see and it is almost like set plays yeah it is and every, every team is doing that or trying to do that mm -hmm. and it, the success of them then depends on the players involved and the clarity of, of what you're trying to do but um i think they're, they're just they're, they're they're so they're at that high level they're willing to take these on um you know, their experience in high-pressure scenarios and all the final semi-finals have played over the last few years, and I'm sure they've tweaked them. They've had to, with, with the defences that are being employed against yeah. them and the tactics that are... Everyone is trying to stop them and prevent all this happening, so they're having to kind of, you know, be one step ahead, essentially, and in what they're doing. And, you know, it's working quite well. With a work on Sunday, you know, you, you have to expect there's going to be a much, much tighter game uh, in Oma. As what do you do if you're, if, you're, if you're Jim Gavin? Do you pick your full team or do you and try and swat Tyrone aside and make them fear for their lives the next time you meet them? Or do you give everybody else a game who needs a game? He gave everybody else a game last year, basically. Against Ross Common and yeah. still absolutely pulverised them. Yeah. When like, some of the best football that was played all year was played. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to know, I think. Paul Flynn scored an amazing goal in that game yeah. that no one's ever seen. I like. imagine he's not going to make wholesale changes. He has had the opportunity in the last couple of games to, to get lads off fairly early. You know, he's taken off a lot of the main players. They, not too many of them have played you yeah. know, full, full games. So... I think he'll, he'll want to lay down a marker. I think he'll go strong and, you know, that, and just kind of keep them aside for, and, and kind of sow that seed for maybe later in the season. Um, because I think it'll, it will take, it will take a, a fair performance to, to get over Tyrone. Um, I might leave out Fenton and McCaffrey and a couple of the other key lads who yeah. are like, you know, and Kilkenny, and wrap, wrap the three of them up in Cottonwood because... And I wouldn't be putting James McCarthy back in just yet. Yeah. But he, he has the luxury to do that. Yeah. You know. Um, Give Dear McConnelly his run. Not yet. Not yet? No. No, I... If not yet, then when? Not this year, then, by the sounds of things. I don't know. It's, it's very hard to read what, what, what's going on there. I, I, think, I, think it's, I, I think it's a good move. Um... I just think there's probably a little bit of time to be put in. You know, he, he's, he's obviously going to be in great shape. Um, it's just, but at, at club level, just bring it up to that, the level that they're at to, to slot in seamlessly. I think he'll probably need a bit more time. Maybe, maybe it is a chance to, to kind of, to, to blow them, <laughs> to, uh, so to speak. But I'd imagine we won't see him till, till later. That would be my own feeling on it, that he'd be sort of just, if a game is, is there and it's, you know, it's, it's in the balance a little bit, I think that's when you see him coming in.